William Moore is a sports science graduate from the University of Ulster with over 12 years experience supporting performance athletes. He is an accredited strength and conditioning coach with both the UK and National Strength and Conditioning Associations. William supports many of the elite athletes within the university and provides support services to many external athletes and national governing bodies. After we have massaged the areas, we can then stretch them to improve mobility around the joints. This work is best carried out late in the evenings. If we foam roll and stretch the muscles before we retire to bed, we elongate the muscles for a longer period of time and our attempts to improve flexibility and mobility will be enhanced. Conversely, if we were to try to do this work at lunchtime and then jump into the car or sit back at a desk for a few hours, the muscles would shorten and our attempts to improve flexibility would be futile. We want to improve the flexibility and the mobility at most of the joints on the lower body. Again, these are the muscles that are used in the running motion. And what we want to do is restore good flexibility to these muscles. The stretching and mobility exercises specifically include ankle mobilizations, hamstring stretches, stretching the rectus femoris muscle, stretching the adductor muscle group, and stretching the glute muscle group. We will now concentrate individually on the stretching exercises and the mobilization drills. We'll start at the ground and work up towards the muscles in the hip. So we'll concentrate initially on the, the ankle joint and completing ankle mobilizations. With the body weight supported on the hands and feet, take the left foot and place it on the heel of the right foot. We then want to push through the left foot and to use the arms to move the body back and forth in a rocking motion that gently mobilizes the ankle joint. With this drill, we want to complete two sets of 10 mobilizations on each ankle. After completing the ankle mobilizations, we then want to switch our attention to the hamstring muscle group. This is a muscle which is heavily used in running and also tends to be very short in many individuals who sit at a desk for extended periods of time. To stretch the muscle, we need to lie on the floor with both sides of the hip in contact with the floor. We need to attach a piece of rope or belt over our right foot and hold the rope in hand. Whilst keeping the leg straight, we want to slowly extend through the hip to raise the foot as high as possible. As you reach the end of the range of motion, we want to apply gentle pressure with the hand to the rope to pull the hamstring into a stretch. We want to hold this stretch for approximately six seconds, slowly breathing out as we hold the stretch and then we can relax. With this stretch, we want to repeat it for a total of five repetitions on each side of the hip. The rectus femoris stretch then is used to stretch the rectus femoris muscle at the front of the thigh. Again, this is a muscle which is heavily used in running actions and also can tend to shorten in many individuals that hold desk bound jobs. We want to locate ourselves on all fours close to a wall. Locate one foot against the wall and the knee on a gym mat. We then want to move the body into an upright position as shown in the photograph. When we're in the upright position, we want to clench the glute tight to extend the hip forward and again hold this position for approximately six seconds. With this stretch, we want to repeat it for a total of five repetitions on each hip. Moving on to the muscles of the groin, we now want to concentrate our focus on the adductor muscle group. We need to locate ourselves on all fours on a gym mat with knees spread apart. Gently rock back and forth five times whilst trying to keep the pelvis in a neutral position. Once we've completed five rocking motions back and forth, we will find that we will have freed up to some extent the muscles in the groin and we can now move our knees a few further inches apart. In this position, we then want to continue rocking back and forth for a further five repetitions. Once we've completed this, we will then move the knees a few more inches apart, and again, we will complete five rocking motions in this position. Our last stretch then concentrates on the large glute muscles of the hip. We want to locate ourselves on a gym mat, lying on our back, and then 
across the right leg over the left leg so that the right ankle is located on the knee of the left leg. In this position, bend the left knee whilst keeping the left foot in contact with the floor and then slowly draw the left thigh closer to the chest to increase the intensity of the stretch. With this stretch we want to hold it again for approximately 6 seconds and we want to complete 5 repetitions on each hip. When we are stretching it is important to never stretch a muscle to the point where it becomes painful. Pain in a stretch is indicative of the fact that we are causing damage within the muscle. We do not want to take the stretch to this extreme point. We simply want to stretch the muscle to the point where we feel tension in the muscle. The tension can then be gradually increased as we complete more and more repetitions and as we get accustomed to the experience of stretching we can increase the intensity of the stretch over the coming weeks. The more we complete a flexibility or recovery training program the more benefit we get from it. Ideally it should be completed around three to four times per week on days that are interspersed between the aerobic training sessions. Initially this work will be uncomfortable. There can be some sensitivity with the foam rolling and with the stretching, but you will start to appreciate the benefits of the recovery training program. The recovery training session will improve flexibility and it will also allow us to feel rejuvenated and ready to take on the next training session. In the initial weeks of training, we should concentrate our efforts on building the duration of the aerobic exercise sessions and completing the recovery training sessions. This should be sufficient for the first month or two of training and allows us to bed into regular exercise without placing too many demands upon the body.